Oh no, where did Gabo go? Gabo, we don't even know who that is yet. Hey everybody, welcome back to Dragon Warrior. Here's a cow. Is are you Gabo? Are you Gabo? Are you hey, are you Gabo? Nay. Nee. <laughs> nice. <laughs> okay, so uh the mysterious little boy uh has run off. We suspect he's gone to Mount Seed. With the wolves and such? Yeah. In the town where humans become animals that aren't humans. Because humans are animals, so it's like kind of like... Yeah. You gotta specify that... It's like, it doesn't make a lot of sense if you just say they become animals. Yeah. You know, do you think these monsters also changed? Like, they were once... You know, these were once forest folk. <laughs> <laughs> and they are they're turned into monsters and then the monsters were turned into forest folk. I don't know. D do you think the monsters consider themselves animals? Um uh, I mean, I think I mean they're animated. They have obviously some sort of physiology like an animal. I think it's it's like an animal, but they're not quite, you know, like if you actually grind their DNA through 23andMe, it would come back like <laughs> maybe they're supposed to be made out of dark magic or something. For sure. For like, sure. they're an animal-like creature that has a completely Spawn different Spawn from magic. But again, it's, these look like crabs, so you'd think that they would have descended from crabs or something, right? No. I think... I think for sure. You know, like, how, like, things on Earth are made from, like, carbon? Like, I think... I think monsters are made from something else, like helium. Oh. oh helium-based life form? <laughs> Yeah. That's why they sound so squeaky. Look! There's a wolf over there! <laughs> uh, I guess we chase it. Whee! <laughs> Impressive. They're lost in thought. You don't want to say no, anything about that? No surprise. I remember when uh, Faye does that at the beginning in a, of Xenogears. Who? Faye. Faye Fong Wong? Yes. I got there. Took me a minute. To remember. That's a game we should play for the channel. Yeah, it's so pretty. Yeah, it's like I, one of the best looking games, I think, in, in the history of gaming. I don't think I've ever heard anybody ever say otherwise. I think it's impossible for someone to critique how Xeno Gears looks, really. <laughs> I don't know what would compel someone to do that. Yeah. <laughs> I like this. I like this enemy design. Um, the colors, or... I don't know. Like, it just, uh, just something about it. It's kind of interesting to have, like, a snake with that kind of bird plumage. Is that what you would call that? You're the I, bird man. I'm not sure if it is plumage. I thought it was, like, like maybe membr membranous. Oh, probably. Uh, membr membranous frills. That would, that's a good dandy band name. Memor memorable what would you say? Membranous frills. Mem it's hard for people to say, but it's it's memorable. Mem uh, memorabilis. <laughs> people would just call us MF. Oh. That's good. That's good. What's up, MF? I think you can st anybody out there listening who's in like like can play music, feel free to take that name for for your band. We yeah. we won't sue you. But just Wink. name your first two children after us. <laughs> um, I would rather them just name one child after both of us. Like, oh, but which name first? Uh, whoever they like more. So oh. Jacob. <laughs> <laughs> it's a competition here at Carriageway. Does Kiefer not have MP? What is going on? What is that status ailment? That is he poisoned? How do you know? I I don't know. It's I told... Okay, so we had started the episode, and then I told Joe, go rest at the end. Get key for some MP. Maybe he just burned it all, like on Fire Slashes already or something. Oh, wait. I think Fire Slash doesn't use MP. Oh. Well, then I just totally wasted Joe's... Oh. Yeah, he's poisoned. Okay. We know how to fix that. Shows how much attention we've been paying. Nice. Okay. Always check... Check beyond the stairs. 
It's the start of a good poem, I feel like. And check both sacks. Mm hmm. Yep. Don't you worry. You have about two it. sacks? <laughs> <laughs> well, you say you got your. your ball sack. Okay. And then you got your. your lung sack. Yes, kind of. So this is why it's important to explore, because, like, imagine you didn't find this shard in this chest in this dungeon. You're, like, boned, just trying to look around, searching everywhere. And especially, you know. Yeah. It hasn't happened a whole lot to me before, uh, which is, you know, there, there's a lot of those very easily missable shards. Especially of the super secret special shards. Uh, yeah. I think it's a credit to the game that, um, you know, it just encourages ex exploration. Like, I always feel like it doesn't feel like a chore. Um, yeah. I mean, it's kind of a fun world to explore because it actually does seem like it changes a lot. You know, like, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, you can go back and visit old towns and, you know, people will say something new or there will be slight changes in in you know oh well they added to this t house or something you know yeah and those those stories progress even after you've come back from the present you you know through the game pop back in to see what everybody's up to you know very rewarding but <coughs> excuse me everybody wow getting uh stuff caught in my throat those mud hands are very classic dragon warrior enemies oh yeah then they turn into blood hands. Blood hands. Blood hand is my favorite metal band. Hmm. It might already be a band. Yeah, it's. So therefore. Yeah, we're not disqualified. We're not vouching for the qualities of any of these bands that probably don't exist. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe you aren't, but I am. If we say on Carriage Way that we like that, that's our favorite band. We mean it. Well, I said favorite metal band. Yeah, so your favorite so, metal band. Oh, Carrie's not almost favorite dead. band. But you know, sometimes I guess you always are. You're more specific than just favorite band. Yeah. Maribel is burning all up all her MP. Yeah, we We're might have, have to take two two uh, trips through this dungeon. I think. Yeah, I th it's probably safe. Uh, I guess I could just. Heal with magic. Nice. Uh, let's do carry again. So I love having carry like just this total boss because we stack them up with um, all the strength seeds. And yeah, the d death seeds. Yeah, you come to carriage way for uh, min maxing for sure. Is min-maxing a term, like, exclusive to video games? Um, I think it's mostly about role-playing games, where, um, I think min-max, you have to give up something to maximize. Yeah, like, you I guess. So you're not, we're not exactly min-maxing. Yeah, min-maxing is like, okay, I forgo all health, all magic, all for strength, you know? Right. So, I mean, I guess you would do that more in a character creator in a western role playing game mm -hmm. where you could sacrifice all intelligence for strength or something like that yeah so what if there wasn't that tree there could that monkey attack you um presumably or maybe it just looks like a monkey hanging from the tree the monster is the tree and its arm looks like a monkey that makes a lot more sense, actually. I like it. It's got just some, like, weird swinging, disjointed arm that swings nuts at you. <laughs> okay. Maribel's almost dead. Yeesh. Yeah, that... This is a tough dungeon, and that thing fled. Yeah. Hey, that rhymed. Oops. Maribel's almost dead. That thing fled. Maribel cast Blaze. 
Now we in a haze. <laughs> I'll, I'll just let you keep going, please. <laughs> Kifa, release Fire Slash. Better than his mustache. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you got there. You, you went there. You went where I couldn't. <laughs> okay. Oh, <gasps> shit. Oh, the door's already open. Let's head inside. Uh, let's not. Let's go around over here. What's nice is we have evac provided. I think provides uh, Maribel doesn't burn all her, her MP. We can tell her to knock it off. Hey, Maribel, knock it off. This is super duper cute. Mm hmm. So Seems like really hard to organize a bunch of owls. I don't. Especially in a hut to hover. I think they're, you know, owls are pretty well put together. That's what they want you to think. Okay, so. Okay, what if the owls are calling the shots there? They kidnap a baby elf, teach the elf to shoot arrows. And so, because like, you, you know, they don't have hands. You know, they, uh... Owls ain't got hands. Uh, so... You know, kind of like, um, <laughs> I don't know what you would call it. Uh, some sort of... Um... Ooh! See... Explore yeah. everybody. What's funny is I think we could actually we might have enough like shards now to go to a different place if we wanted to. Yeah, I mean that would get confusing. Okay, I'm gonna evac out of here, huh? Yeah, let's do it. Whoa, that uses a lot of MP too. So this is part of this is part of old Dragon Warrior games, you know. Um, really, eight is still pretty tough in places, but. Uh, Oh, don't cast sleep, Maribel. What a waste. Uh, but pro like seven in in previous games, really pretty difficult. Like multiple runs through a dungeon, you got to just cut your losses, go rest up. Now you know the land. You got all the chests open. Right. I mean, I guess it would be like um, like a Souls game, like a like Demon Souls, Dark Souls, Bloodborne style game, where you could make it through a, a single level without dying once or you know and make it th through the boss it's like how it would trivialize uh the experience somewhat you know you gotta just go feel it out a little bit yeah you, you've got to feel that like resistance for it to f have weight for mm -hmm. it to have you kind of build that tension and as long as like you're playing smart i mean you'll die occasionally but you know, if you're playing smart, it, it just has enough tension, enough of that feeling like, man, I've come so far, be yeah. nice to keep going, but... Yeah, you know, and the the wise adventurer, you know, knows when to turn back. To live another day. Yeah. Wow, look at that strength boost. Strength boost! Nice. And it might be worth it, you know, we might have amassed enough money to buy some, like one of those, at least buy, you know, Maribel or Kiefer something. Right. She did get pretty beat up by that monkey. <laughs> <laughs> we are the monkeys. We beat up Maribel. Have you ever listened to the monkeys? Just that one song. Hey, hey, we're the monkeys. We like the monkey around, hey. I feel like in my head that song is very lazy. It's like a Rick and Morty bit. Like, I don't know if it really is or not. Well, I mean, the. But it, in my head, it's just. They weren't a real band. It was a TV show. They were oh, really? a parody of, like, the Beatles. And they had their own. Well, they're a real band if you're a parody band. Well, I mean, it, it was a show first. Like, it was a show where they were a band. And then they had music, you know, and then they, be, you know, it became like music people could buy and listen to on the radio. Mm hmm. Yeah. Uh, but in my head, it, it's it's Justin Roiland singing. <laughs> hey, we're the monkeys. Hey, hey. <laughs> it's like some alien species in Rick and Morty that that just repeat songs from the monkeys lyrics from the monkeys so okay is the that monkey song or get swifty better get swifty yeah. give me a break 
Uh, we should get this kitten shield for Maribel, methinks. Yeah, that's that's a hell of a boost. Maribel. Yes. Thank you for voice acting. You're um, welcome. Scale armor for Kiefer. That is pretty good. Ooh. Um, you know it's worth it. You know it's worth it. Yeah. Clock, 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 clock. Kiefer. Yeah. Clock, clock. Oh, he's increased in style. Dude. Clock, clock. Did, uh, did that sell? Oh. It's probably not worth selling anything because then, then we just sacrifice potential money. Oh, if we die and yeah, get the die. death tax. Is it worth saving? Uh, yeah, let's do it. Because it's almost like... I do really appreciate that years there's never like a pure game over state in Dragon Warrior. You know? Mm -hmm. it, it just really... Is it... Two? Uh, yes. Orf. Orfy. Orf, orf. Uh... I think that's just such a neat mechanic. Like, I've really noticed playing Bloodstained. Mm -hmm. It almost feels... Like it should have. Like, a, yeah. Like, it, just a pure game over is just so mean. Antiquated. Yeah, it feels mean, man. <laughs> like, come on. I could lose everything. I lost all those shards I collected. I lost all the... Uh, all the money, all the experience. You know, I mean, I think there should... There could be a penalty for death, like in this... Um, or in yeah the uh, the uh, Souls, Souls games. games yeah I think Souls is really brilliant for how they 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 allow you to recover it which I think is nice so there's that feeling of okay I have a lot of Souls but if I die I can make it back here and get them uh, which I right. I think is kind of a nice dynamic just to kind of give you the courage to keep going right but then it also smacks you back down because that's really tough yeah <laughs> you know grab your souls and, and, and escape and I also love how soul like souls souls games are just brilliant in their currency and their experience being the same thing I think that's just such a neat idea uh, should I t tell no magic yeah for the time being uh, how do I go back? Okay. Uh, because, I mean, for the longest time, it's, you know, all games you play, you have your, your spending currency, and you have experience points, and those, there's no overlap, and, and I think, uh, Miyazaki, the director of those games, has just, like, a way of asking, what can we, like, condense down to be the essential? Do we need both of those to be separate, or does that just add, like, create sort of an unnecessary divide? You know, so I think merging those two things as one is a nice narrative, like, kind of world element, while also being a really neat mechanic. Right. A trade-off of do I, you know, buy, you know, uh, repair my armor and restock my my items. Or do I go for a uh, level up? Yeah. So you, I think what you're talking about is designed by subtraction. Um, you think that's what I'm talking about. Which was, you know, something that um, Fumito, uh, Fumito Ueda, uh, the director of Shadow of the Colossus, is well known for. Um, oh. Oh, I thought I, that was close. And, uh, you know, fun fact is that uh, Hidetaka Miyazaki, the director we're referring to, he got into video games because of his love of Ueda games. Mm -hmm. I'd like to see, like, a cool heart-to-heart -heart interview with those two guys. Might, might, might already exist, you know? Uh, you know, I've been waiting to see it. I, rem I think it was maybe last year or the year before, I can't remember. Or maybe... Maybe it's been a, it's been a couple of years, but um, in an interview, uh, somebody had brought that up to Oeda in an interview. Uh, oh, I guess it was, I think, immediately preceding the uh, release of The Last Guardian, mm -hmm. uh, Oeda's latest game, and 
he was surprised that uh, Hidetaka Miyazaki was such a fan. And he'd said something, well, I'll have to talk to him sometime. Hmm. Um, but, you know, I hadn't seen it. Well, maybe maybe they did talk, but it was over drinks and instead of... Uh, yeah, in a, in a Famitsu interview. Yeah. Because honestly, you know, like there's an extra level of pressure, you know, when you have like somebody there recording everything you're saying and you got to have that like kind of PR speak. Yeah. Um, left or right? I think here. Yeah, I think left. How crazy is it, though, that we live in a time in games that it's such a new medium that, like, these these masters that are so influential, you know, like your Awaitas and your Kojimas and you know, whoever, and you know, pick a, a game director. Most of them are st still alive. You know, like probably none of, not too many of them have died from old age at the very least. Yeah. And, um, yet like they've created these things that have influenced generations of other creators already. Yeah. I think it's just bizarre. And I imagine, you know, in 50 years, um, people are gonna be like, whoa, you know. Hope we have a bunch of anecdotes. How weird would it be to live in a time when uh, that we, you know, lived at the same time as Amy Hennig, <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, Roberta Williams, uh, Hideo Kojima, yeah, you know, Yuji Hori. Oh, Maribel learned heal. Oh, sweet. Okay. Yeah, Joe, we have a t we've got tons of anecdotes. Don't you worry. Don't you worry your little pretty nose off. You know, or maybe, you know, we're too close to it and nobody will remember any of these. <laughs> it's like, oh, they didn't know Tom Jones, <laughs> like the, the guy who really, like, made the first good video game, <laughs> <laughs> who lived in, you know, made this first video game in 2070. Yeah, well, it was yeah, everything, before, to... everything before that was just garbage. Yeah, I mean, some... <laughs> It's and a, I mean, it's, and we understand that lots of people make video games. It's just the, these um, super talented directors that can that can guide a team to greatness. Because that that isn't, I think, an every team needs a good leader. Yeah, like the, and I think I've made this point before on another uh, episode, but that. Uh, into the Spider Verse movie, which is, I think, one of my, f or which is one of my favorite movies. Uh, now, it was made by the same team that made the Emoji movie and Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs, and it's it, that's that same animation studio, but they just didn't get, you know, they didn't have the leadership to fly until that that movie. Mm -hmm. You know, it didn't come together. You know, it. They were mismanaged because obviously they had like an enormous amount of talent. Um, so like I think leadership is so important, and I mean that goes without saying. But there's there's a there's a no. <laughs> there, there, I think about like how many books like uh, exist in the world. That that's like the very premise. Leadership is so important. No, okay. And it's like we're coming to this revelation on okay. episode twenty Part of, of Dragon it's Warrior. Because we're in this this bubble where, like, reading sites like Resetera downplaying the importance of video game directors. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh well, Hideo Kojima is nothing special. Like, there's loads of talented people on that team. Yeah, but there's tons of talented people on every team. But. I don't care what the people who make Call of Duty are doing, not because they're not good at their job, but because the management sucks. Or at least... Well, I, uh, that's it's a not, little bit of an unfair comparison, okay, because maybe, but you like, gotta you get, pick an actually bad game. It's just, okay. that's a game that isn't for you. Right. So we're, we'll explore this area and next. explore further this conversation on the next episode of Dragon Warrior. Okay. We hope to see you then. Bye, everybody.